Hi there, I'm Scott Wood. This is the interview show. I'm standing outside the Fortune Sound Lounge with Lapalux. We're gonna go inside in a second and do an interview. But before we do that, he's going to have a cigarette. Lapalux. <laughs> Lapalux, whenever I hand you the microphone, you always laugh first. <laughs> it's because of the way you ask questions. It's funny. I don't know, there's something about it. Hello, this is. <laughs> Hello, this is Lapalux. You're listening to the interview show with Scott Wood. Okay, I'm sitting in the backstage room of the Fortune Sound Lounge. I'm sitting beside a guy named Stuart, a.k.a. Lapalux. Stuart, how about you introduce yourself? <laughs> Hello, I'm Stuart. Uh, I go by the artist's name, Lapalux. This is your last night of the tour celebrating your album, Nostalgic. So that's Nostalgia with C H I C on the back. <laughs> Stuart, why aren't you drunk right now? I think I'm still drunk from last night. <laughs> you do look a little hungover. <laughs> yeah, had about three hours sleep last night, so I'm pretty, pretty done right now. Well, I'm glad that you're at least coherent enough to talk to me and do this interview. <laughs> That's all good, man. Uh, no worries. <laughs> what are you looking forward to the most? After you're done the grind of the tour, uh, I'm gonna get back in some of photography and stuff. I recently bought like a really nice Canon 7D camera, and uh, I'm taking it around with me for this tour. But I'm gonna go around with that again, I think, and get back into sort of rolling, rolling around and taking photos of people and shit. As he's been talking, he's been rubbing his eyes. He really is quite hungover. <laughs> so how about we listen to a song right now? Yeah, cool. All right, we'll be back in a moment. Stop, stop, stop. 
to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You just heard Girl, off the record, Nostalgic, by a guy named Lapalux. That's G-U-U-U-R-L. I've got that guy here with me who made the track. I'd love it if you could say a few words about it. Well, yeah, it's a pretty interesting track, actually, because the actual original lyrics that I wrote and you know it's you know it's a very simple kind of sample from myself uh, you know sung by myself and manipulated and stuff but it, originally the song wasn't that way at all it was just kind of like a a small section of a of a different track but then yeah I just remixed it together and I was messing around with some new sort of ideas in Ableton with Max for Live and I was using I think I was using the push at that time as well the Ableton push and just messing around with different effects and stuff as well and it all came together pretty haphazardly but it worked out pretty well in my in my opinion I guess anyway <laughs> I like it too and you know what I don't think we're the only ones <laughs> yeah okay Lapalux I would love it if you could tell me the story behind your stage name uh, okay yeah well basically I was uh, a little bit inebriated uh, on several kind of things round a friend of mine's house and there's an English expression I don't know whether you guys have it over here but it's uh, in the lap of luxury basically it's like you know you're, you're digging your surroundings and you, you know you're chilling and I just accidentally said it basically I'm, I'm quite a I don't know to articulate things I find it a little bit difficult in uh, vocabulary wise so I usually combine words and I think it's portmenture when you like smash two words together and make a new word so yeah I'm all about that basically it was just a an accident but it's stuck with me ever since really I'm gonna start and break this down simply and we'll build up to the complex question so are you with me Stuart aka Lapalux yeah for reals let's go all right Lapalux you're signed to Brain Feeder Records Mm -hmm. can you describe what Brain Feeder Records is to people who don't know. Basically, it's a record label run by Flying Lotus. He's like a, well, he's a huge, you know, influence on what I do as as well as a lot of the people that are on the record label as well. Yeah, it's been going, I can't remember how long it's been going now, but for a a little while. I'm going to jump in. What type of music do they make? Well, it varies across the board. You, You know, you've got techno and housey kind of stuff and electronic experimental you know it's all over across the board really but everyone you know everyone on that label has a sort of very unique sound but it's you know it's it's sort of a derivative of la beat scene pretty much and you know the mixtures of different genres from around the world a lot of people might say that flying lotus is a little bit of a genius what type of music does he make (laughs) well i mean look him up It's, it's you know he's all over the internet and You know, it's hip-hop mixed with jazz. You know, he has a crazy heritage as well. And, you know, I mean, yeah, look him up. (laughs) Yes, I know that question may be a bit frustrating, but I'm going somewhere. I've got a point. Okay, okay, okay. He's looking at his watch, literally. I'm looking at a mosquito bite I've got in my hand. It's really bugging me right now. So anyways, the point I'm making here is that when I read stuff about Lapalux, you're often described as the most accessible of all the brain feeder producers. So I wanted to get your reaction to that, but so this talk means something to people who've never heard of any of this before. Hmm. I wanted to establish all that stuff up front. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean... Um, I don't know. I think my music varies quite a lot. It's not really stuck in a genre. That's not to say that anyone is stuck in a genre on Brain Feeder because everyone sort of experiments and goes outside the box and stuff. But because of where I live and what I've been surrounded in London and the scenes that go on around there with house and techno and popular music and stuff around there, it's kind of like... I choose to make stuff that's I never really stick to one one genre really so I mean I guess it's accessible because a lot of people just find a track or two and they like that for what it is but then you know they could listen to the rest of the stuff and be like oh that's completely you know different or you know it's got like a sort of housey vibe or this one's got like a jazzy kind of vibe and 
you know, it's accessible because I think people find their own, their own, what they like of me. I think. I've seen posters for shows for you where the poster says, Brain Feeder's most accessible artist. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I've never seen that myself. But, I mean, yeah, sure. I, I, I can dig it. I can dig it. So long as Welcome back to The Interview Show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You just heard Without You off a record called Nostalgia Chic by Lapa Lux. I've got Stuart, a.k.a. Lapa Lux, sitting beside me here in the Fortune Sound Lounge backstage area. I'd love it if you could talk a bit about this track. This is a track uh, that me and Kerry Latham... Uh, actually, originally, Kerry wrote lyrics for another song which you know it was it was working to a point but i started working on the instrumental just you know just messing around with some chord ideas and some sort of down tempo kind of slow beat and i just got the lyrics from her as an acapella pitched them down stuck them on the the new track and it just came together like that pretty much and it was a really fluid process. I mean, the track game to get, came together in a couple of days, pretty much. It was real good, real easy. Lapa Lux, I would love to talk about how you work a little bit. So let's start with your workspace. Are you a guy alone in a dark room on front of a computer 
with a dog at his feet? I don't have a dog, but I am a bedroom producer. I don't have a studio or anything. Just sit in front of my computer all day. It's grey in London constantly, so you know you can't really go out and do things, especially in the winter months and usually most of spring as well. So, you know, I just sit there all day, every day, just doing doing that. Let's take a moment and let you sip some water so you can rehydrate. <clears throat> Are you the type of guy who, if he didn't have to answer annoying questions from an interviewer, could be making a track right now? Not really, actually. I have to kind of be in the mindset. And I usually like to try at least and be well slept. I don't really like doing too much sort of computer work when I'm tired but and like hungover, especially. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really tend to write a lot of music on the road. I like to sit at my you know desktop computer i like to have all my things like turned on and all everything just laid out in front of me so i can just get going with it because i spend a lot of time you know faffing around with things and i like to have it at my fingertips rather than just having it all like precariously sort of set up on like a bed hotel bed somewhere and like you know trying to jam on a keyboard or whatever <laughs> you know all that sort of stuff do you have a special knickknack at your work desk that you could talk about Knickknack. <laughs> I've got some nice smelling massage oils that I like to just sniff now and again. That's <laughs> it's quite an interesting thing. I don't know. I like smells by my uh, desk. Got nice scented candy. What flavor do you have right now? Oh god, it's like a mixture of all sorts of things. It's like mandarin, uh, like loads of other herby kind of stuff as well. I like smells. When I'm when I'm writing music. <laughs> Unexpected answer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know I was going to say that, but that's what's on my desk at the moment, anyway. So the next thing I'd love you to do is I'd love you to take a track on the current record, Nostalgic, and talk a bit about how you constructed it. So I'll be playing this in the background a bit while you talk, in case the listeners are curious. All right. <laughs> okay, let me think. So which song are you going to select? Uh, Swallowing Smoke off Nostalgia Chic. Oh, I've been saying the album title wrong. Oh, no, no, it's fine. You can say it like that. That's, that's, that's all good. Nostalgia Chic is how I like to pronounce it. But, you know, a lot of the songs and even the name Lapalux, you know, people usually say in different kind of ways anyway. So we're all good. This is crushing to me because I was happy that I knew how to say Lapalux after reading the story before I came here. <laughs> yeah, we're all good. But anyways, let's get on. I'd love you to take a track and talk a bit about it and how you make it because you make very dense textured stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd say the probably most dense track that's on the actual record is Swallowing Smoke just because there is, I can't remember how many layers there was now but I had to cut it down because that track went through loads of different kind of drafts you know I wasn't quite happy with certain sounds and the way they were bouncing off each other but it took ages to, to put together it was, it was about 120 tracks all just laid up and tiny little snare hits that were like you know layered up seven times and textured background sounds and layers on top of the vocal bits and samples here there and everywhere yeah so let's keep it simple how do you start it's tricky though because i don't really have a, i really don't approach music in the way kind of like i start with a drum beat or i start with this i usually just i mean i can't even remember how that song came about i think i was listening to to an old record and you know i figured i'd try and sample it and mess around with it yeah I don't know it's, you know sounds that I already had like Foley sounds that I, you know I've got a portable recorder that I go out and record stuff with and you know I make textures and ideas kind of come from the lack of having anything that sounds melodical I guess and have that as a sort of base and then I use that to, to build on and create you know melodic textures as well as so let's get specific. Can we talk about a texture that you went out and found and then put into the song? Oh, God. I, honestly, it's like a... I mean, you, you know, you can load up the file and there's about 15, 16, 17 different bits of sound, like hoovers going off. You know, someone doing hoovering and bits of 
like chains and stuff going for like snare hits and you know there's all sorts of stuff I mean I can't remember now it was a long time a long time ago when I made that track but. so as you're going through your day-to-day -day life now when you record stuff or go out looking to capture sounds is there stuff that you specifically look for I usually just hear something going on if it's like a you know if we're out and about especially on the road and stuff you hear lots of strange you know like bird noises and stuff like that but more strangely I think walking around in English countryside and, and stuff like that there's remember this place it's really weird it's like a it's in the Cotswold and it's there's this like boat dock or yacht dock or I don't know what you really call it but it's on this huge lake and all the sails, it was like dead of night. We were walking around, just me and a couple of friends, and all these boat, the yacht sail things were like hitting against the post and making this eerie kind of, sounded like spring reverby kind of weird sound. But anyway, that's, I mean, that's, I know that for a fact, that's in uh, Swallowing Smoke. But yeah, there's a lots of, lots of other random sort of stuff that I hear. And I might like grab the recorder real quick and. Yeah, it. How do you keep track of it all with so many moving parts? <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, this is the thing. I mean, I usually have to end up cutting a lot of stuff down to make it, you know, mix better and stuff to become more clear in the mix and, you know, ideas to come forward rather than it just be a whole, you know, collage of everything. But, I mean, you know, I, I, it's all technique, I think, to be honest. I use a lot of mixing techniques and... You know, I master my own stuff usually before it goes to a, like a master and engineer, which is never really, you know, a good thing to do. I wouldn't advise it, but it's it works for me. And, you know, I've created my sound because of that, like, process that I use. And that's just the way it is, really. You just heard Swallow and Smoke. That's by a guy named Alapa Lux off his record, Nostal Chic, but it's spelled C-H-I-C. I've got... Lapalux sitting here with me. He's just described his working process. He's just talked a little bit about making this track. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. <laughs> You've said in a couple of interviews that you started getting into music and making music to escape your everyday life. When music becomes your everyday life, what becomes your escape? Mm. Uh, I'd say photography, pretty much. I, uh, I use photography now as a kind of a thing that I don't look at seriously. I mean, I'd like to, uh, but I, I, you know, I just go around with my camera and take photos of people and random things that are going on. And that's for like my own sort of personal sort of thing to do, really. I guess. But I mean, I still use music as a sort of escapism. You know, there's there's times where I have a lot of downtime, especially after like big tours and stuff. So I'm I'm just you know, I've got a lot of time to do other things, you know, watch films and, you know, chill out and do all, all, all manner of things, really. And, um, you know, and then I get back into music after a while and then it's all fresh again and, you know, keep the ideas, keep the ideas going. and It's all good. All right. Lapa Lux, thank you very much for taking some time and sitting with me today. Last track I'm going to play is Flower off your record Nostal Chic. I'd love it if you could say a little bit about that as I bring the music up. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, originally it was a loop uh, idea that I sent to uh, a friend of mine called PY. And she sang some bits for it and stuff. And I basically just sampled it and chopped together this kind of juddery remixed of my own material again, like version of this loop that I sent her basically and it kind of came together like that it was a pretty simple kind of track but it works pretty well all right once again that's flower by a guy called Lapa Lux off his record Nostal Chic I'm Scott Wood you've been listening to the interview show Lapa Lux thanks so much thanks for having me hey this is Lapa Lux you're listening to the interview show with Scott Wood yeah.